welcome back. It's your man Wise. And today I have a great video to share with you guys, man. Kevin O'Leary goes in on CNN host over Letitia James up in New York, seizing Trump's assets. You know he got to come up with this money. It's over $400 million. No company will give him a bond on any of his businesses, which I think is outrageous. But the number that they're asking for is unprecedented. So it makes complete sense why there's not a bond company willing to put up the dough. And to be honest with you, they may not have the dough. Most companies may not have that type of bread on hand to put up a 400 plus million dollar bond, or if they do, it would probably suck up majority of their resources. Before we get into the video, like, share, subscribe to the channel, drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. And before we get going, we must have a word from our sponsor, Child Light Candles. Please support Child Light Candles today. Link in the description box below. Child Light Candles is a veteran-owned organization. The candles are amazing. The candles smell great. They are 16-ounce candles. I don't know if they are listed in that way on the, on the website, but they are all 16-ounce candles, 100% organic soy to include the wick and the substance within the candle or the wax, the soy wax. And these candles are amazing. Childlike candles, get your candles today. Fragrances lit for the kingdom. Now let's get into the video. Um, you got a lot of money. <laughs> You're a high net worth, net worth individual. And I wonder, give me a sneak peek inside of this world. I mean, why can't Trump secure a loan off of the value of his profits alone and properties alone? I don't think this case is about Trump anymore. I think this case is about New York. It's about the American brand. It's about what we promised the world in terms of fairness and justice and investing capital in a country that's built the largest economy on earth. Forfeiture, seizing of assets. Is that in our nomenclature in America? Is that what we tell people that want to bring their money here and protect property rights? Forget about Trump, nothing to do with Trump. You think this is good for business in New York? You think this is good for business in America to take a law that we use to protect people against buying refrigerators at an overpriced value decades ago and apply it against an individual and then talk about seizing assets like he was in Venezuela hmm. or in Cuba? This is well, a very, very, very bad look for New York. And everybody around the world is watching this. This may be well, great for the Attorney General, but this is I not good you. for America. I hear, I'm glad you ended with the last very. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known that you emphatically believed your position <laughs> with that, that third very for there. But I want to ask you, obviously, Catherine, there is asset and forfeiture laws on the books because they do seize assets. They do yes. forfeit property and beyond. We will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court, and we will ask the judge to seize his assets. Now, you take, you know, an issue with this, of course, more broadly in terms of what it means to be in an American business structure, Kevin. But in terms of the valuation, can you be clear as to why? I mean, why would the properties not be sufficient collateral? What a great message to send out all around the world. Take a claim where there was no monies lost. There was no there was no fraud here in the context of actually people losing money. Deutsche Bank, who made the loan, was made whole. And let's make a penalty of half a billion dollars against a, a, a crime, apparently, where no monies were lost. Great message for New York. Great message for America. Bring your capital because we'll protect your property. I think that was a statement that would be much better made sometime in Venezuela. I'm not kidding. That's a scary, scary message. And by the way, uh, there are uh, no again, such thing as half a billion dollar bonds. Again, the laws exist to protect the marketplace. There are no half a billion dollar bonds. Never been done before. Never. This law has never been applied. Forget about Trump. Nothing to do with Trump. Everything to do about America and the New York brand. I love this state. My children live here. 
a horrible message to everybody around the world watching this. Absolutely horrific. Well, this wait, Kevin, Kevin, but, but hold on Trump. a second. Kevin, Trump what will would be, be gone the, one day. Hold, this hold attorney on a second. general I, will be gone one day. And this I is what you want to tell people around the world. I have a wonderful voice and it won't be talked this over. Hold, Kevin O'Leary, I would like to this hear what you have to not say. But America. What are you doing? I, not but, America. But it, it's not, not America, America, but it is the Laura Coates live show, and I am speaking. So that will be the rule, not Venezuela, not nowhere else. Fine, but it's Laura Coates Live. And hello, my name is Laura Coates. The question I want to ask you on this point, though, is what does the reverse say, Kevin, if they do not take action? And I, I hear your point about you believe there's no fraud and that everyone was made whole. Yeah, look, I'm surprised that Kevin is wasting his good name defending fraud and lies, which I am convinced, Kevin, you have not committed to not enforce laws against fraud is just bizarre. It, that That is how it works in Venezuela. Well, Kevin O'Leary, don't make me regret this, but I'll give you the last word here. No, no. <laughs> I'm like everybody else all around the world, sovereign wealth, pension plans, um, everybody in the financial services industry is waiting for adult supervision. We don't have it here yet. This is hurting New York, hurting the people of New York. This year was the opportunity to come into Chicago, California, and New York City. I've been waiting for 40 years now to invest in that marketplace. I was completely confident, Steve, this was the year to come. And when that ruling happened, uh, it was like pencils down, don't touch it, don't go there. Prominent investors have signaled their intent to halt their business in New York following the $355 million verdict in former President Donald Trump's civil fraud case. Real estate mogul Grant Cardone announced that his firm, Cardone Capital, would no longer underwrite New York real estate just days after Shark Tank star Kevin O'Leary vowed to no longer invest in the state as a result of the verdict. I'm no different than any other investor. I'm shocked at this. I, I can't even understand or fathom uh, the, the decision at all. It, there's no rationale for it. Cardone said in a post, immediately discontinue all underwriting on New York City real estate. The risks outweigh the opportunities at this time. Recent political decisions will continue to deteriorate price and benefit states that don't have these challenges. Focus on Texas and Florida. Judge Arthur Ngoron ruled that Trump must pay over $355 million for conspiring to alter his net worth to receive tax and insurance benefits. And Gorin's verdict additionally bars Trump and his sons, Eric and Donald Jr., from doing business in New York for three years. O'Leary called New York a loser state and told Fox Business that he would never invest in New York now. New Yorkers should be concerned. The fine people of New York should ask themselves, why are we such a loser state? How are we going to attract business? It's not just the existing businesses that are fleeing out to Texas and Florida. What about new money like this that I'm talking about, like a $4 billion data center? Not a chance I would put that in New York. Zero probability. Never. Wow. Y'all seen that? Boy, I tell you, New York, something else, man. But George Soros, he doesn't care. Letitia James doesn't care. She's got her bag. D.A. Allen, he got his bag. He doesn't care. They do not care about the people. That's what we have to, that's what we keep trying to tell you guys. Democrats don't care about regular people. And they don't care about how the policies and the things that they do, how they affect others. Over 160 businesses have already New York, 160 costing the state over one trillion dollars in tax revenue going. Thousands of jobs gone. They've moved to Florida. They moved to Georgia. They have moved to Texas. Jobs gone. A lot of your wealthy people that once lived in New York, they're gone. New York is turning into a state and a New York City is turning into a city that is uninhabitable. There's no work there. All the major companies are gone. Amazon wanted to move there. AOC did everything that she could to stop Amazon from building their second headquarters on the East Coast there. It's a place that you can't go and thrive in anymore. New York used to be the place where if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Now it's just escape from New York.
If you are someone that wants something out of life, you need to get out of the city of New York. You probably need to get out the state. Because organizations are leaving by the boatload. Kevin O'Leary is 100% right. Why would anyone take the risk? Grant Cardone, he mentioned it as well. He's like, hey, the risk outweighs the reward. And to be honest with you, when you look at the amount of companies that are leaving and you look at the amount of businesses that have bolted, real estate prices are going to come down anyway. So it won't even make sense to invest in, in, New York, in New York because the values of the properties there aren't going to appreciate. They're actually depreciating. Letitia James said something very smug in, in, in that interview. They didn't get to it all the way in that one, uh, in the clip they showed. But she said that Wall Street's still there and we'll do an okay. Tourism is up. So tourism's up as you, has the na as you have the National Guard in your subway system. Tourism is up as you, and you have uh, illegal immigrants standing around Times Square with Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse and, and, and Spider-Man suits on trying to take pictures with tourists. The amount of the, the crime rate is up, robberies and things of that nature up. So they're banking on tourism. Since when did New York bank completely on tourism? Now, we know about Wall Street, but what happens when Wall Street decides, you know what? We need to stay East Coast. Let's move this thing down to Virginia or let's move this thing down to Florida or let's move this thing down to Georgia or even better. Let's move it down to South Carolina in a state where it's really cheap and the people could actually use what Wall Street has to offer. And they can invest that money there in a red state. What happens? What happens to New York then? They've gotten too big for their britches up there. Letitia James, Alvin Bragg, they are literally running the city into the ground along with the uh, the governor there, Holcomb. They're running the city in uh, the city and the state into the ground. And you know what? Who cares? Good riddance. It's unfortunate that that is the case, but the people of New York, y'all voted for these people. Y'all put a Letitia James in office. Y'all put an Alvin Bragg in office. Y'all put this Holcomb lady in office in the governor's seat. DEI at its finest. And look at how it's working out. It's a daggone mess. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. Keep God first in your life. America first. And I'm going to catch up with you all next time. Peace.